for being authentic about who we are and what we do. And being able to just sort of navigate our lives without excuse or apology. Unlike a couple of nuns in a story that someone sent me a while back. It's called Catholic Shampoo. <laughs> While shopping in a food store, two nuns happened to pass by the beer, wine, and liquor section. One nun asked the other, would you like a beer? Oh, the second one said, yes, I think it'd be very nice to have one, but I feel a little uncomfortable about buying it. First nun replied that she handled it without a problem. So she picks up a six pack or a 12 pack or 18 pack or <laughs> And goes up to the checkout line. Well, the cashier has a sort of surprised look. So the quick thinking nun says, oh, it's for washing our hair. Without blinking an eye, the cashier reaches under, pulls out a pack of pretzels, puts them in the bag and says, the curlers are all me. <laughs> fooling anybody. So just go ahead and be real. We come to our second installment on bedrock beliefs and one of the things that um, I really want us to get as we go through this series is just the huge history and emphasis that this particular church has placed on prayer. We have from the very, very beginning said we are we will be a praying church. That when we come up against something that's bigger than us, we will get on our knees and we will pray it through. We won't give up. We won't give in. And over the years, we've seen some dramatic results to prayers. We have logs and lists and prayer wreaths and books that catalog some of the miracles. But there is a miracle alive in the sanctuary this morning. And if you've been part of Sun Coast for very long, uh, you may have heard her share her testimony. Um, but one of the things that um, this church did for me was actually save the life of my older sister. And Linda would like to come and share that story with you this morning. Healing has been pr 
present in, in my life ever since. Another incident, serious incident, took place in 2011 when my 39-year-old son had a hemorrhagic stroke. And I was devastated. And one of the very first calls I made was to Sharon because I knew that his chances of recovery would only be maximized by being held up in prayer like I was. And after 26 hours of driving to Baylor Medical Center in Dallas, I found my son unable to speak and unable to move the right side of his body. He was able to go back to work in February of the following year at the job that he had. was the day I arrived at the medical center. And every day before that, I had been able to find a parking spot in the very lowest level of the garage. <laughs> and this day, it's around and around, all the way to the very roof. I couldn't believe there were no parking places in that entire parking garage. But when I opened the car door and stepped out, on the cement was a tiny, plastic, orange frog. And I started to cry. Right then, I knew my son was going to be all right. And before I even got to the elevator in the parking garage, I was on the phone with Sherry, telling her, I found a frog. <laughs> Fully relying on God. Amen. And I took that frog to my son's hospital room and I said, this is a gift to you from your Uncle Sherry <laughs> <laughs> and God. <coughs> and he still has it. And those are the kinds of miracles that I've experienced in my life through the power of prayer and the healing that God has provided. How I am the very definition of blessings in disguise is when I look in the rearview mirror and I see the amazing things that I've learned that so many of the people around me have learned from the experience of being in a place where God's the only answer and being able to say, wow, Look at how that worked for me. Look at how it worked out so that I can walk around and truly say the worst moments of my life were the best gifts God ever gave me. beliefs, I want you to know that um, God is not a respecter of persons, you know, Dan may have liked her best, but God likes us the same, amen? <laughs> if you weren't here last time, we actually talked about how when we were getting ready to build this building, uh, we had 16, at that time 15 scriptures, that we wrote on little rocks and prayed them for a year, and those verses we're going to be um, covering over the next several weeks. They are literally embedded in the foundation. Uh, we, we, they had done the final grading and we're going to pull the concrete and we said, we want to pour right up here, right by the chancel, is where we want these promises buried. And we talked last time about how important it is to have a strong foundation, a stable foundation. And we began with the scripture from 